Association. I am Sajda Abdul Karim, the President of the Black and Hispanic Student Union. Good morning, I am Mil Nas West, the Vice President of the Black and Hispanic Student Union. We would like to welcome all of you and appreciate you for being here. I would like to acknowledge everyone, including the Central Office Administration, special guests, teachers, students, and our principal, Ms. Gannon. Celebrating Black History Month affords us an opportunity to reflect on historical moments so that we are able to take steps forward towards solving problems that still exist today. Black history is also referred to as African American history because most African Americans are the descendants of Catholic Americans held in the United States from 1619 to 1865. Blacks from the Caribbean, whose ancestors immigrated to the United States, are also considered African Americans, as they too share a common history of African roots. Today, we reflect on famous Americans and are thankful that they are served as our voices from the community, which is our theme for today. We hope that you enjoy our reflections, celebration, and presentation. We will now have Angel Dixon sing Lift Every Voice and Sing, accompanied by Dr. Bransky. Mr. Melillo, Mr. Nyquist, Dr. Baranski, Ms. Quinonez, and Mr. Hanna for their special assistance as well. So I'm extremely excited and I'm honored and I want to sit back and really embrace this special moment. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Gannon. Now we we'll have history reading from Tabor Queen and Asia Hanna. Good morning, everybody. My name is Taewon. I'm here to present Muhammad Ali. Born in Cassius Clay, Louisville, Kentucky in 1942, Muhammad Ali became an Olympic gold medalist in 1960 and the World Heavyweight Boxing Champion in 1964. Growing up in a segregated South, he experienced racial prejudice and discrimination firsthand. But at an early age, Ali was afraid of any belt inside or outside of the ring. Muhammad Ali was known for his public stance against the Vietnam War, suspended from boxing league for refusing military service. Following his suspension, Ali, Ali reclaimed the heavyweight title two more times during the 1970s, when he feigned boxing against Joe Frazier and George Foreman. Diagnosed with Parkinson's disease in 1984, Ali devoted much of his time to philanthropy, earned the Presidential Medal of Freedom in 2005. He died on June 3, 2016, in Phoenix, Arizona. My name is Asia Hanna and I'll be presenting on Bessie Comey. 
1922, a time of both gender and racial discrimination, Bessie Coleman broke barriers and became the world's first black African-American woman to earn a pilot's license. Because flying schools in the United States denied her entry, she took it upon herself to learn French and move to Francis to achieve her goal. After only seven months, Coleman earned her license from Francis' well-known Corger Brothers School of Aviation. Shortly after, she returned to the United States. Though she wanted to start a flying school for African Americans, there were countless barriers. Coleman specialized in stunt flying and parachuting and earned a living barnstorming and performing aerial tricks. In 1922, Coleman was the first public flight by an Amer African American woman in, the, in America. Tragically, April 30th, 1926, Coleman was killed in an accident during a rehearsal for an aerial show. She was only 34 years old. Bessie Coleman remains a pioneer of women in the field of aviation. We will now have our African dance performance from Jordan Evans, Faith Johnson, and Sajid Abdul. <laughs> being inspired by a documentary on history. The 13th. The 13th Amendment's ratification was met by unmatched animosity. The emancipation of a people theoretically marking the end of existential slavery. Civil liberties still infringed upon as one is convicted of a felony, so enslavement became the prisons, and slaves the enemy. In your eyes, gangs are just the fault of some violent predisposition yet they were born from the neglect of a community by omission of justice by those whose job by the very definition was to protect and serve. So how are we to blame when our position in society isn't something that we made nor desired? It's the fault of those working in opposition because though you may conflate criminality with black culture, it was never a disposition, but we had to create our own structure. And though it may seem inefficient, your blatant indifference shows that any way it was turned, you wouldn't be the ones afflicted by a reality that's all too familiar. And when there's only been one representation of us, that seeing is believing. So you're wired to equate being black with being something lethal. So they use lethal force. It's supported. It's endorsed. And when the pain weighs heavy on our shoulders, our complexion becomes the price we pay for something we can't afford. 
Please welcome Jordan Evans, Faith Johnson, and Emil Nesson West. Good morning. My name is Jordan Evans, and I am treasurer of the Black and Hispanic Student Union. Today, I will be presenting on Alex Haley. Alex Haley, born on August 11, 1921, was an African American author and journalist. Haley attended Elizabeth City State College and Auburn A&M College. He is well known for his book Roots and the autobiography of Malcolm X. Haley served in the U.S. Coast Guard for two decades before pursuing his career as an author. The Famous Roots is about Haley's ancestors' life from living in Africa to becoming slaves in America and later their rise to freedom. Roots was published in 1976 and is now a popular TV show and movie. Later in life, Haley published more historical novels about his ancestors' life, such as A Different Kind of Christmas and Queen. On February 10, 1992, Haley died of a heart attack. Haley inspired and educated a nation by contributing awareness to the horrors of slavery in American history. Good morning. My name is Faith Johnson, member of the Black, Hispanic, Black and Hispanic Student Union, and I'll be presenting on Nat Turner. Nat Turner was born into slavery on October 2nd, 1800, on the Southampton County, Virginia plantation, owned by Benjamin Turner. He allowed Nat Turner to be instructed in reading, writing, and religion. As a small child, he was thought to have some special talent because he could describe things that had happened before he was born. As he grew up, he was deeply religious and became a preacher. Nat Turner believes he was chosen by God to leave slaves from bondage. On August 1st, 1831, Nat, along with other slaves, led a violent insurrection. The incident led to even harsher laws against slaves. He hid for six weeks after the uprising, but was eventually caught and later hanged. Although the event did not end with the desired results, he left a legacy as one of the first African American leaders to stand up in one of the most barbaric times in slavery. I'm confident that he inspired others to stand up for their freedom and rights. Thank you. Carter Bailey, born 1918, achieved multiple accomplishments. Miss Bailey began singing at the age of three in her father's church. She later began her career as a chorus girl, who gained fame as a singer on the nightclub circuit during the 40s. Her Bailey's style was described as unique. She often appeared in theater and ran and sang with the big bands, including those led by Carl Basie. In addition to her work in theater, she performed in movies. She had her biggest triumph in the 1960s with the revival of Hello Dolly. She won a Tony Award for her outstanding performance. In her later years, Miss Bailey wrote several books, and in 1975, she was appointed Special Ambassador to the United Nations by President Gerald Ford. At the age of 67, she graduated from Georgetown University with a bachelor's degree in theology. In addition to her work in a, as an actress, singer, and writer, she was known at, for her work as a humanitarian. Her Bailey died in 1990. Thank you. Thank you. Please welcome Brandon Baez with introduction of our guest speaker. Reverend Professor John Henry Scott III Esquire is a tenured full professor of business and the business pre-law advisor at Gateway Community College in New Haven, Connecticut. Reverend Professor Scott is a pastor of Jesus Stands for Love and Justice Ministries Incorporated also in New Haven, Connecticut. He is a graduate of Suffolk County Community College, Long Island, New York, a graduate of the State University of New York at Stony Brook, Harvard University School of Divinity, and Hofstra University School of Law. He and his wife both graduated from law school together. He is a recipient of the prestigious United States Small Business Administration and the 2005 Minority Small Business Champion Award for the state of Connecticut and New England. In 2007, Reverend Professor Scott received the Chancellor and the Board of Trustees of the Community Technical College Merit Recognition Award, and in 2011, the Gateway Community College Faculty Appreciation Award. He serves on the GCC Academic Awards Committee and Congress Rosa DeLauro's Service Academic Advisory Committee. He also serves on the Board of Directors for the Watershed Fund of South Central Connecticut Regional Water Authority. In addition, he is a member of the Connecticut Bar and the New Haven County Bar Association Court Relations Committee. He is a sought-after motivational lecturer whose focus is for the hearer to live the American dream. Reverend Professor Scott has been married to Mrs. Dawn E. Squat Esquire for over 33 years. They have two sons and a grandson. Please welcome Reverend Professor and Attorney John Henry Scott III. All right. John. 
You see over here on the, on the screen, that's Christmas Addicts. Christmas Addicts was the person who started the United States of America. What do you mean, Rev? Who started America? Well, he's the first person to die at the Boston Massacre. Well, how do you know he started everything? Because John Adams, the second president of the United States of America, defended the British soldiers who shot the colonists, right? And he said it was that, you know, the Negro guy, the, the mulatto, he started it all. So that's where the person started the United States of America, Christmas Addicts. Give him a round of applause, Christmas Addicts, yeah? <laughs> Next one. Anybody know who the first Rosa Parks is? The first Rosa Parks. Here she is. Her name is Elizabeth James. And see, for two things. One, slavery is, well, I'm a business professor. What slavery is free labor? You work 90 day, day and night, you get paid what? Zero. Now. Now what do we do? Oh, we bring we bring our businesses to Latin America, you know, Africa, Asia. We pay these people nothing. China, we don't pay them anything, right? So get off the race thing for a second. Realize it's about that money. Then they created a system that said, oh, y'all inferior, different, all that kind of crazy stuff, right? Uh, originally slavery started as indentured servitude. The first case is John Punch. John Punch was a, uh, a black guy who ran away with two other indentured servants who were white. They all got caught back in 1619, and when they got caught, they got whipped. To the two white ones, they said, okay, you have to serve another five years. To the black guy, they said, you're going to be a servant for the rest of your life. Because that's one of the first cases of slavery starting, based upon what? Free labor, make that money. So Linda Jennings, she was going to a church. She's an organist in New York City. Uh, all 13 colonies had slavery. Connecticut had slavery too. Okay, all of us had slavery. Because slavery is what? Free labor. Make that money, right? It's not just out there in the fields taking swing rolls and cheerio. No, it's building the buildings, right? You know, remember when President Obama became president? Uh, they only gave you 10 minutes, so I have to talk a little fast. Um, and they said, oh, slaves built the White House. Not news to me, or the Capitol. No, they built everything, because there's what? Free labor. They were the masons. They were the construction people. You name it, they did it. Okay. So Linda James was going to church and on the trolley, and um, they made her uh, get up. You know, she said, no, I should have to go to the back. She should get up. Make a long story short, she got arrested by the police, just like, just like um, uh, Rosa Parks. This is 1854. The person who defended her was Chester Arthur, 24 years old at the time, a future president of the United States of America, and she integrated the railroad, uh, the railroad cars in New York City. Check it out, Elizabeth Jennings. Now, you know what? I just learned something myself. I'm always learning. I'm always learning. And I like that show Timeless. Anybody like watch Timeless? Any hands on that time? Yeah. And on, on the last Timeless episode, they went back to time, and they go back to time, and you know, they, they, they went back to see the hidden figures person, remember Katherine Johnson? Right, it was one of the black women who was uh, the black computer, and, J and uh, John Glenn said, I'm not going to go into orbit unless Katherine Johnson, this black woman, did the computations by hand. A genius, not bad, a genius, and the hidden figures. Well, anyway, they went back in time, uh, timeless, they did it with her too, and I just learned this that the Lone Ranger is black. The Lone Ranger, not Tonto, but the Lone Ranger, he's black. No way. And, and so we're watching that, and the guy on the show goes, the Lone Ranger, what? And so my wife and I, we Google it, and it's based upon an African American uh, uh, marshal. And so we're still learning history, it's amazing. Listen folks, my theme is this. There is one race, the human race. Okay? Turn your neighbor and say, neighbor? Oh, neighbor. There's one race, the human race. Now, I'm going to prove that to you in a couple seconds. Stay with me. Shh. Stay with me. First, the NAACP was started by blacks, whites, Jewish people, uh, Gentiles, everybody. The second thing I want to say, when you get a chance, look up the Triangle Shirt Factory Fire. The women, this is 1911. These women who were immigrants, now they were black because black people were not allowed to work up there, right? Okay, in New York City, at where they were, they weren't allowed to work there, okay? But they mistreated the immigrants, the Italians, the Irish, the Jews. They locked them in their room while they're making shirts. They were on like the ninth floor or something like that. It caught on fire. 
and they could not get out. And a lot of them were burned to death. They jumped out of the, ninth, uh, the, the top floors and they, their, their bodies slammed on the pavement. Why did they mistreat them? Because they were immigrants. Go back and Google the Irish. I once heard um, um, come on, Edward Kennedy Jr. speaking at uh, Gateway Community College, I'm a professor, full professor, full timer there, almost 20 years now. And he talked about how the Irish had been mistreated uh, in Boston, and how they had to, had, to, had, had, to, had to start their own type of organizations. Every group's been mistreated in America at some point. Problem is, black folk had the stigma of having to have their skin being brown. But, but, it's not a stigma. Black is beautiful, right? And white is beautiful. And Asian is beautiful. And we're all beautiful. Turn your name and say, neighbor? Oh, neighbor. You're beautiful. That's right. I wish I had time to play the song. All right, let me stop. Let me stop. Check this out. Check this out. I want you to see it for yourself. Wait, 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 wait. Stay with me. You have a handout. This is the real, this, we're not dealing with, um, what do they call these fake news things now? They make up? Alternative facts? No, 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 it's not alternative facts. This is a primary source, okay? I gave you a primary source. Whenever you speak before a group of people or give a presentation, you want to make sure, one, you don't plagiarize, and two, you give primary sources. Check this out. Plessy versus Ferguson. Plessy versus Ferguson. I might get a volunteer here too. I want to go. Who wants a volunteer and read something for me? Come on up here a second. If I want to volunteer, go make me read it. Okay. All right. Look what it says. Prior to customers first, take a look. Shh. This was a petition. First, it's 18, May 18, 1896. I'm going to tell you how crazy race is. Petition before the Supreme Court. That petitioner was a citizen of the United States of America, of the United States, and a citizen of the state of Louisiana, of mixed descent. Mixed descent! Oh, let me ask you a question. What color is President Obama? Oh, wait, 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 wait. Technically, technically, well, first of all, his, his father is what? African, right? I mean, he's really African from the real place over there, right? We're all transplanted, okay. What's his mama? She's Asian, right? She's Hawaiian, right? No! Obama's mama is white. W-H-I-T-E, white. She's not Hawaiian. She's not Asian. She's white. And she's old time white. Her, 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 her lineage goes back to like John Madison, those boys, okay? So without Obama's white mama, you have no Obama. Okay? Give it up for his white mama. Give it up. Yeah, that's crazy. That's all they hear. Not only you know. that, his white, his white grandparents raised him. So here's my point. Well, why do we call him the black president, right? Why do we call him that? Because technically, remember there's one race and human race? How do you know that? Because in biology, if you're a human being, another human being, have a child, guess what? It's a human being, right? Mm -hmm. So biologically, there's only one race, a human race, right? And, and so, um, uh, but, but he's actually half black and half white. However, let's take a look at what America calls him. Check this out. <laughs> Here it is. This guy petitioning Clesmer Ferguson, take a look. Mixed descent. Check this out, it's very important. Shh, don't miss it, don't miss it. In proportion of what? Seven eighths Caucasian and one eighth what? African. African what? Hold it. He's seven eighths white and he's got one eighth of black blood. And what's the next line say? That the mixture of colored blood was not discernible in him. What's that mean? It means that he looked white. You know what I tell my class sometimes? I tell them, I say, listen, y'all, y'all think you're white, right? You might not be white. Y'all go ahead and do that ancestry stuff. Find out you got a brother from Ghana in your background. <laughs> Check it out, folks. Check this out. I'm giving you history. It's right in front of you. It's from the United States Supreme Court. It's not me. It's the court saying that. This guy is seven-eighths white. He's one-eighth African blood. 
and you couldn't tell. You know, it's like some people are mixed, right? Uh, who have black blood and white blood. You don't know what they are. I, I said this once in class, white student, he wasn't white, he looked white. You can't tell what people are in this day and age, you can't tell. And he came up to me after, he said, Brother Scott, I said, what? He said, my, my father is about two shades lighter than you. I said, huh? You're right about that, okay? You don't know what people are. Now, I had another student come up to me once and said, Brother Scott, she's Polish. I'm Polish. I said, okay. And you're right about that, that, that people are all mixed. They don't know what, they, what you are. I said, what do you mean? My grandmother, uh-huh, she's black, uh-huh. But don't tell anybody. I said, I won't. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm saying is you can't judge people based upon what they look like. Hello? You cannot judge people based upon what they look like. This is the United States Supreme Court saying that this guy was 7 eighths Caucasian, one eighth African American blood. He, you could not tell that he was black because he looked white. But guess what? They told he told them get to the back of what? Get off the railroad. I got uh, one minute left. I have to stop. Get off the railroad, right? That's the famous case, Plessy versus Ferguson. It wasn't overruled until 1954. Finally, last thing here. Other side. You have the Civil Rights Bill of 1875, folks. You may not get this in school. You may not get this in law school. I'm giving it to you right now. That bill said treat everybody equally. When it said treat everybody equally, why did we get the same bill 100 years later? Because bad people took over America and said, you people get to the back of the bus. So what you have to do is make sure that in America, everyone's treated equally with dignity and respect. For there's only one race, and that's the human race. Thank you so much. Well, I contacted him on Monday because I received an email that our original speaker had a family emergency. So I really appreciated the fact, and we all do, that he was able to come here today at the last minute. So please give Reverend Scott another hand. Please welcome Ayanna McKnight with the tribute to our 44th president, President Barack Obama. Barack Obama was the 44th president of the United States and the first African American to serve in the office. First elected to presidency in 2008. He won a second term in 2012. Born in Honolulu in 1961, Barack Obama went on to become president of the Harvard Law Review and a U.S. Senator representing Illinois. In 2008, he was elected President of the United States, becoming the first African-American Commander-in-Chief. He served two terms as the 44th President of the United States. As a young man, Mr. Barack Obama graduated magna cum laude from Harvard Law School in 1991. After law school, President Obama returned to Chicago to practice as a civil rights lawyer. He also taught constitutional law part-time at the University of Chicago and later helped organize voter registration drives during Bill Clinton's presidential campaign. Later, as a senator, he worked with Republicans and Democrats to draft legislation on ethics, health care services, and early childhood programs for the poor. President Obama's commitment, advocacy, and dedication to the community and public service makes him a true voice from the community. Despite consistent opposition and countless obstacles, our 44th President Barack Obama's accomplishments were many. He established veteran work study programs, tax credits for college students, created more jobs, and instituted the Matthew Shepard Act, which expands on hate crime definitions to include gender, sexual orientation, gender identity, and disability. We are proud that Mr. Barack Obama served as the first African American president. Now, please welcome the Hampton High Chamber Choir.
Day in this time, see a land. No hungry children, no empty hands. One happy morning, people will share. Thank you. 